what's going on y'all okay so i'm here for a little album review um you might get iggy's album review tomorrow you might because i haven't listened to a chat all the way but um i just got michael jackson's um new album escape and at first i really wasn't gonna listen to it i didn't i thought it was supposed to come out this week actually it came out last week so forgive me but either way I really wasn't missing much from the album. Y'all, you know, I'm the type of person that do not like when people pass away, an artist pass away, and then all of a sudden they got they keep on releasing these albums after albums after album after they pass away, and it's not really their voice. You know, like they have to add people onto the song to make it a full song because they don't have enough vocals or whatever. I don't like when they do that. I, I hate it. If... The only time that I'm fine with it is if you have the completed song already, you know, and then if you want to go in and put a little medley behind it or whatever, a little instrument, instrumentation, that's fine. But when you got to manipulate the voice and, and add duets and stuff, it's just like, ugh, that means that it shouldn't have been done. It's not ready to release. It wasn't ready to be released because it wasn't finished. Leave it alone. So that was, I had my reservations about this album. And especially since, you know, the shit that happened with the last album, um, where soon after he passed away, that album came out and people was debating about, you couldn't tell whether or not it was really him on the album or was it this guy that was faking and singing like him and, you know, the family was in the uproar because they were saying it wasn't Michael completely on all the songs and, you know, the record label doing shit for money and, you know, of course, soon as a big celebrity or a big star like, you know, Michael Jackson, that they're going to use any and every tact that it is to, you know, make continue to make money off their name. And this is one of them. Um, I listened to the album, and I'm, I'm glad I listened to it, and I looked at the tracks, and what really kind of made me hesitant is because it's actually eight songs on the deluxe uh, album. It's 16 songs. And what it is, is the first eight is basically, you know, the remastered version of the original. Because the last eight is the original. The original demo version or the original recorded version. And I got, like, six of those eights. The only ones that I didn't have already before this shit came out was Escape in um, Chicago. That was the only ones that I, I haven't heard before or I didn't have. And... I was like, hmm, is it even worth buying? Let me be honest. <laughs> but, um, you know, I listened to it. And let me just tell you this. <laughs> I'm actually glad I went on. I'm, I'm, being, I'm actually glad I went on ahead and listened to it and, and gave it a chance. I think it was uh produced by, uh, I don't know how much of it that, I know uh, Dark Child, Rodney Jerkins produced the song. And um, Timbaland actually produced some songs too. But I was over, I, I don't know, like when I first heard it, like the radio version of Love Never Felt So Good, they had Justin Timberlake on there. I'm sorry, y'all, let me turn it off. They had Justin Timberlake on there. And I was like, no, just let him sing the song and do all, don't, don't fuck up that song like that. But... I'm listening to the album, and on my version, Justin Timberlake ain't no duets on there. So, hey, thank God it's just him. And these are the full songs. And basically, all that they did was put the instrumentation behind it and made it sound, you know, it sounds like a Michael song. It sounds like something Michael probably would have done on a few of the songs. And then uh, some of the other songs sounds really current. And I was like, okay, cool. You know, I'm listening to Love Never Felt So Good. It, it's it's nice for what they did with you know put the up the up to date you know tune make it a little you know up tempo and everything but I prefer the demo version when he's at he, basically the only instrument that you hear is the piano and, and you hear him talking in the background that was just so cute but um that was nice then we have Chicago Chicago hmm. It's not one of my favorites, but it's it's listenable. Basically, Michael has a song on damn near all his albums about stealing or fucking some other man's wife. All the damn side. All the time. But, you know, it's a cute song. Basically, it was just saying how, you know, hey, 
she told me that you was sing she was single. She ain't tell me that you had he had uh that she had a wife. I mean um a husband, some kids and all that shit. So hell, I didn't know that while you know she was over here kicking it with me, you was at home taking care of the kids and shit. I didn't know that. So hey, you can't be mad at me. Be mad at that hoe. That's basically what the um song is about. He was like, cause I don't do that. I was like, you don't do that, but you did that on just about every album. Girl, stop. I mean, boy, stop. Y'all know, loving you is basically like i just want to be i don't want to go nowhere else and i just want to love you and all that shit it's simple as that and if you listen to you know the different on most of these songs you can tell exactly which era that some of the songs were made in um i think it was escape or slay to the rhythm one of those where he starts off and he was like dark child that 9 out of 10, that song was probably made, probably Escape. It probably was made during the period when um I think Rodney Jerkin did Invincible, one of his last albums, you know, that he put out. And, yeah, because Jock Child did do Invincible. Jock Child, nah, nah. Say, no, that's the wrong artist, wrong artist. I was about to give y'all a little Destiny Child. Wrong video, boo, wrong video. But, uh, you know... And Escape is one of the songs that I actually like on there. You know, it's real up-tempo. I can just, some of the songs I can really just see him if he was here and if he would have approved of doing it and they kept the way that they have it now. I can see him just going the fuck off in the videos and putting on a bomb-ass, well, if he was in the condition to do it, put on a bomb-ass live show and just dance his ass off to it. Um, do you know where your children are? Do you know where your children are? You know, don't judge folks. You got people out here with diseases and you got people out here getting abused and you got, you know, he got a message behind this, this thing. But, you know, do you know where your children We're going to move along. Blue Gangster has got to be my favorite one. I don't know. It's just the way he was singing on that, the way the texture of his voice and how he, he always sound like, you know, after... <sighs> The history era after the bad, not the bad era, but the dangerous era. And then you get to the history. From then on, he did sound like he was literally screaming at us all the time on the damn album. He was screaming at us on Blue Gangster, but it was smooth with it. Something about it was just real smooth. And I, that's one of my faves on the album. And Slay to the Rhythm, you know, that's a good song. It's the up-tempo. I'm glad it wasn't as many. I mean... They had up tempos. Most of it was up tempo, and the beats went with the flow of the song and the melody and everything. Um, I would like to have heard some, uh, you know, ballads, ballads, because when I first heard a place with no name, I thought it was gonna be a slow song because that's how I think the demo was or whatever, or the version of the one that I had, or either the one that I had, it hadn't had no music behind it. But either way, you know, it's still. It's still kind of up tempo, and then in the song "A Place with No Name," in the chorus he was like, "Take me to a place without no name." Without no name basically means with a name, because that's like without is a negative, no is a negative. That's a double negative, double ne negative, negative. Cancel each other out, make class here. Bitch, I just gave y'all a fucking lesson, okay? Come on now, let's get into it. Mike, what was you doing? What was you doing? That didn't make sense, but I get where you was coming from. But um. Like I said, um, Loving You, also, Loving You, you can tell it came from the Thriller era because his voice, he was really singing, and you can really hear it. it wasn't so much as he was screaming. It sounded very young, and he had those vocals, like the R&B vocals that he used to have back in the day, you know. So, all in all, I would say get the album, give it a list to listen to. If you're a big Michael Jackson fan and you need to collect this stuff, and, and put it in the um you know in your collection yeah do that i don't know about y'all who probably got a problem with the record label uh you know um uh, putting it out and what they trying to do you probably not gonna get it but i suggest you at least give it a try because that's probably that was my thing i wasn't trying to girl please because they crooked over that but you know it is what it is um i give it a b plus it's real good it's something that I can you can grow to. Really is, really is. It's a nice little well put together put together put together album. And I suggest you just at least give it a listen. 
Um, and please, I just don't want no more. Even after this, I, I just don't want no more albums from him. I don't. Let it go. <laughs> but of course, that ain't going to happen. Oh, Lord, if they come out with a Whitney Houston album, bitch, I'm going to die. I'm going to be over. I'm like, no, I can't. I can't deal. I can't deal. But um, <laughs> I'll see y'all later. Uh, y'all tell me how y'all feel about it. And yeah. I'll be back later for Catfish, you know, tonight. Catfish is going to be a mess. So, uh, yeah. I'll see y'all later. Peace.